Welcome to Warmaster Podcast, episode 180 with Chris and Paul and Barry. Hello, everybody. Hello, listeners. Hello. Thanks for coming back on, Chris. Uh, for people that don't know, Chris is uh, vice chair of the the rules committee, and also he, he prepares this lovely um, change document that we're going to be discussing today. Thank sins. you, Barry. Nice to be nice to be back here. Um, it's been a while, actually. It's been about a year, hasn't it, yeah. since we did a similar podcast for last year's things. So yes, you've got your mug there. If you're playing the podcast drinking game, it's um, three sips or three fingers. If they have a get ball and Barry have a guest on. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but I mean, if, you're what look, you... if, you're, if you're looking for the drinking game, it's on the experimental forum. I think I put it up a while ago there. Yeah, <laughs> it, it it's been an eventful year. So, and, and we really did take the um, the brakes off the old um, war wagon this year for um, changes to the army list. So there's quite a lot going on. Well, I mean, it's, it's been a good year, of course, for the game. Um, beautiful brand new um, army list book or actually our rule book, actually. Um, Alice has put a ton of work into that. Um, yeah. And it's nice to see that's that's sparking a lot of interest in people coming into the game. Um, hopefully not just the people who want to print a rule book and stick it on a shelf, but hopefully people who want to actually play um, and get into playing the game. Um, we're at a very nice place with miniatures for Warmaster. Um, extremely easy now. I think almost all the factions have been done. Um, the one or two that we don't have a full line of printable miniatures for, they're definitely in the pipeline and will be done within the next couple of months. I'm, I'm thinking of... Um, the beast men that Greenskin is doing, um, he's nearly done with that. Um, and we're now we're now the miniatures at the point where actually we've got multiple options for many of the armies. You know, in in the Warmaster cycle of Zodiac, I think this is the year of the dwarf because we're getting dwarves from. We've got now got two dwarf armies from Cromwelly Forge, both of them lovely. We've got Forest Dragon doing that at the minute, um, and it's it's really it's a good time to be playing Warmaster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Good, good, good. Right, so should we crack on because there's a lot to get through today? Yeah, yeah there's lots to do. Lots sure. to do. So, if I share this document, I believe Alice has put it up on the Revolution site. Um, so, if you want to download it and read it um, for yourselves, the format, as always, we've got the changes that were agreed on this year. We've got also a record of changes that were made historically just so that if anybody ever wonders oh when was that changed also sometimes we wonder when was that thing changed um, that we've got a little record of it um there's been a little bit of a change in the way that stuff gets from being a conceptual idea into an approved status rule for the um for the game so yeah. Barry, I think you were more involved in that. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Because we used to have four stages and now we have three. Yeah, yeah. So basically what we had was um, a stage where we would, after what a period of one year, we would re-vote on everything. So we'd vote something through and that would be then uh, developmental, I believe. It would go from experimental to developmental. So experimental is when people have done some playtesting and brought it to people to kind of champion and get through the process. And then uh, we would vote on it and it would become developmental, which was like a halfway house between approved and experimental. So it's been voted on once and people thought it was a good idea, uh, but then we'd have a confirmatory vote the year after. But what in effect that was doing was just doubling the amount of work. So in 2022, we'd have all of 2022 votes to do, plus a repeat of all 2021's votes. And basically that, that, process was only ever doing uh, like a safety net. It was just providing a way to retract if we got something wrong. It wasn't really um, it wasn't really rubber stamping the changes because most of the changes were fine. So they, they, they just went through, they just sailed through. But what it was doing was um, just providing a safety net and also doubling the amount of work for Alish and Dave with his uh, website, the Army List Builder. Uh, and so we had to think about where we were and what, what we were trying to achieve. And rather than have two, rather than having, having the safety net and having to vote on everything, what we would do is then, like we've done with the pikemen, if we make something that's wrong, which everybody makes mistakes, you know, even even groups of people make mistakes. It was it, with 21 different heads looking at things. Sometimes things don't go the way you want it to go. So what we've decided to do is just 
reverse bad decisions rather than re-vote on every good decision. So if you get something wrong and somebody says, we've got this wrong, and they put it up to vote and people agree, yeah, it's not working like we wanted it to work. It's a bit overpowered or whatever it is. It's underpowered. And then it's only happened once. And it will happen again. But uh, this way, we've reduced one of the stages and we've reduced a, a ton of admin. ton of admin for me, ton of admin for Alish, and, a, and a, an unbelievable amount of admin for Dave. I don't even know how he could keep that many different lists running on his website. Mm, yeah. Yeah, some the idea of the developmental was sort of almost supposed to be approved, and we thought we'd got it balanced for most armies, so it was kind of okay maybe to use in a tournament if the TO agreed. Um, and you know, you say we got it wrong um, once with the pikemen. Um, I'd add Nippon the the, the first version of developmental of the Nippon list. Um, there were some major exploits that we that only became apparent when some people in the community decided to exploit them. And at the end of the day, the process that we went through of, of you know, going back to play testing, um, the status of the list didn't really matter at that point. So well, also, I think this, also, this, is, this simplifies it. Also, when when people went to Alice's site to get the book, there was like so many different versions of developmental 2021, experimental 2020, approved 2021. It was just like nobody's using any of these lists apart from the approved list. So yeah, calling exactly. it developmental didn't mean anything because yeah. most papers players just use whatever the approved lists were. So we just now we've got to the stage where if it gets passed, it moves to approved. If it's wrong next year, they'll get dragged out of approved, whatever the change is. So worst case scenario is something is wrong and hand on heart, I'm not sure we got everything right this year, but that's just my one perspective. I'm only one set of eyes. Uh, it'll get changed next year, but it really is wrong. Yeah, yeah and, and it keeps it keeps a um, like a scene like that dynamic, doesn't it? You know, like, um, you know, is in thing, you know, I, 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 I prefer, yeah, I think that's a better system. It's like, it, yeah, it, it, that, there's only positives to what you've like sounded off there. Yeah, and um, we had a big. I mean, everybody should be aware of the fact that we uh, we had to go through a big change process this year. So there was a big impetus to get a nice set of books out and try and get as many changes done as possible. So that it, it's likely one or two things have slipped through unintended. But yeah. that's just the way of it. Nobody's getting paid to do this, and they're giving up a lot of time, especially people like Alish and Matthew and Jan and Chris. Just ridiculous amounts of time. And, but and thank you. you for doing it. No, it's a community effort. Um, thank you, Barry, for what you because you do a lot um, as well behind the scenes. Of uh, yeah, yeah, but, but we've also got Ian. We can't we can't ignore Ian. Ian's Ian's our white knight at the moment, running yeah. around, s putting out fires and stuff. Yep, and growing the community with his. Uh, he's, he's got he's got a lot of a lot of a uh, lot of dudes on that YouTube now. The man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very popular. Very popular. Well, good, so they're, they're good videos. They're re yeah. they're really good videos. Um, and they come, the, the reason they're so good, they come from such an experienced player that any advice that he gives is always good. Um, and they're, they're beautifully produced. Um, I, I think Ian's missing a trick doing or not doing voiceover work because he probably could get <laughs> some good job from doing that. <laughs> Fantastic. OK, so uh, right, we've talked about the where we are with the, 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 the now three categories. Oh, here comes the meat. Right. So as we read through this, we're, we're only going to talk, um, we decided before we went on air, we're just going to talk about the 2023 changes. So anything, if you're watching the um, video version of this, if you see anything in grey italics, that stuff has been voted on before, it's in the document if you want to download it. But so this podcast is only going to be like, you know, a couple of hours long that <laughs> we're just going to talk about 2023 changes. Well, hopefully we get it done quicker than that. But yeah, certainly no longer than that. Holy moly. Mm. Okay, so, so shall we kick off? I mean, uh, the, we'll go through the armies alphabetically. Um, yeah. And I think the, when we come on to Albion, the Ian has made some very good points. Uh, Ian and Alex actually have made some points about reducing the point value of some high cost um, units, particularly high value monsters. So across the board, we have voted on points changing. You'll see this coming up quite a lot. So all the armies who have giants. Um, they now get them for 135 points, which is about a 10% reduction. And you'll see that in many, many, many um, armies. Probably when we get to it, it's probably more interesting to talk about the um, the army that wasn't, where the point value wasn't changed for the high value cavalry. But that's mm -hmm. a different discussion. But yes, yeah, so yeah. Albion now, you now get an extra, what, 15 or 30 points. 
If I mean, you were playing Albion, would you ever would you ever pick two giants or one no, giant? I, I wouldn't even take one giant. Would I be getting a Fen beast for free? So it, uh, yeah, whatever. Whatever. I mean, Giants, I don't know if people are used to using them. They really are very unreliable and it's very difficult for them to do very much for their points unless you're very lucky on the the, the Giant Goes Mad table. Mm. Yeah, it's their, their entertainment value for a friendly game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that yeah. goblin shaman trying to command them from the other side of the table so you know <laughs> the Giant's going to go a bit loopy. <laughs> right, good stuff. So, right, yeah, that, moving that's an on. easy one. Um, mm. the points cost reduction on like cavalry Barry, do you, I was, I wasn't so involved in that discussion. Would it do <laughs> if you want to? Well, I can, bug. It's it's something I, I fought against, but I, I'm quite happy to discuss it <laughs> okay. uh, because I I felt like it it just uh, exaggerated a problem that was more, more widespread in the game than that. Um, I think lots of things we're doing to reduce the cost of cavalry are ignoring the problem that the real issue is that the three, three, four plus cavalry are too cheap. And we keep making other stuff cheaper in order to make the difference between like these light cavalry desert riders and the knights that Araby have. So that different that, that points difference is bigger. And in, in fact, it would, would probably be more sensible to just kind of push up the cost of knights over the board, across the board, and then leave these kind of where they were. And they'd still have the same points differential. But, but anyway, so for some reason, we decided that uh, these guys needed a discount because they don't do enough on board because we took away the the, the kind of can't be pursued rule, which was an optional rule. Yeah. And that made them really bad value again, because the only thing that pe I mean, people were taking a lot of these bad boys, not in this one, but these light cavalry. People were like taking eight, 10, 12 units of the buggers. So what we did was obviously very impactful in the game, but probably too much so. Mm. So. When we reined that back again, they went back to the kind of being close to useless. Um, were the people who were taking a dozen units of them, were they people who played a lot of ancients by any chance? Because the, the removal of the pursuit thing, the pursuit thing and the option like cavalry rule, it did make me feel like we should have doing skirmishers by stealth. So, um, I, I, certainly I, don't, I don't think so, no. I think, I think, there's, there's, I think there's actually very few people who play both who play both ancients and warmaster like revolution so no I, I don't i don't think that was the case no i think it was just i think it was just people just um you know um making making use of uh you know making use of that light cavalry optional rule mm. okay. right, so you we'll see, see that in a few armies bye bye, bye go on. oh it's just uh, yeah i mean i've already said what i need to say about this but i mean it the, the problems are twofold one is the knights issue and two that Shooting is deliberately overcosted everywhere in every list, whether it's skeleton bowmen, whether it's like I don't know high elf archers. Everybody, all shooting's expensive, and I think it was built into the game so that people couldn't have gun line armies. It just couldn't be done. You could try it, but it wouldn't work because it's everything's too expensive with too little armor. So I think I, I, I don't know long term if if shooting should ever really be viable in the game. As, as anything other than just to add kind of confusion to the game like to mess with people's plans you shouldn't be winning games with shooting is what i'm trying to say well okay. you, you can't that's yeah, the point. I think, and, and, yeah. and my, my view is it probably should stay like that because yeah otherwise you're just playing you know line up your soldiers and roll some dice <laughs> line up your soldiers, walk forward and die yeah, yeah. okay yeah. Isn't but, that the core mechanic in the new edition of 40k? <laughs> Every edition of 40k, I think. I think, I think it is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get there before I'm all dead? Is the, mm. is the game. Right, so Beastman. Or, or do, people, do people just actually just throw actual money at each other rather than b bothering buying the models? <laughs> that that would cut out a lot of the middleman, actually, if they just did that. Yeah, like, I don't think everyone, <laughs> everyone would be happier. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's, that's 40k version 11 coming out in about two years' time. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we we're not we're not talking about 40k we haven't got time for that nonsense oh, yeah, beastmen. A whole different... but the the beastmen were actually there's quite a few changes changes here a few of the armies have had quite significant changes um the beastmen things um shall we read let's read them out yeah so beastmen infantry do not suffer the usual minus one command penalty within woodland that is logical, fits with the background. 
perfectly fine. Sendergore's light cavalry reduction, same as what we just talked about for the Araby. Dragon Ogre Shagoth reduced 260. Um, and again, that's just another part of the reducing of high value uh, so, monsters. So, so are these the giants that aren't giants? Dragon these Ogre are the well behaved giants. Well behaved giants. Without the, so you just pay an extra, whatever, it's 25 points to not roll on the table. Mm. Which some people says takes all the fun out of it. <laughs> they're certainly no better, are they? I mean, what, they're, yeah, they're not a Stegadon or anything, but. Okay, screaming bell. Do you, I mean, Paul. Paul, do you, do you have this army, Beastmen? Beast I've army? used it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've I've used it um before and won an event with it. Um, but it what I what I found is is obviously it it, ma- it relied massively on how much scenery is on the table. You know, is in like for it to be to use its best ability. And so if you if you had a, if you had a way of making sure tables had like a set amount of scenery, then Beastmen would yeah would be benefit from that. But uh, you know what? Like similar, like one of one of the games I played um, in that event, I won. There was just literally barely any scenery on it. I didn't have anywhere for <coughs> my beastmen to ambush out of, so I had to use the sides of the tables, which is basically meant they really didn't get much involvement. Mm. Um, <coughs> but then, then, but I think I think also a bit of a luck on the day because then I played that same army into Sherwin like after the event, and I got smashed. Yeah, like uh, so, it, it was it just like sometimes it's uh, sometimes you you can be good in, good in the moment. So it's like yeah, I've, so I've I've had some experience with Beastmen, uh, but um, but this um, all of these changes would make them a much more interesting army. Okay, so you you would take the the Shagoth if it was a bit cheaper. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I I, I yeah, I I in that event that in that list that I won an event with, I had a unit of um, drag um, dragon ogres. Yeah, um, and they got to dragon ogres get reduced in points. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yep. So that's you know I find a use for them, and you know if a, you know, and I, I'm not so negative on monsters, I guess as some, but I you know the fact they're cheaper means I'm more inclined to use them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If someone was running a sweepstake for when we find the first typo in this document, yeah, that's yep. I'm calling that now because the um, yeah you're right the. Dragon always did get reduced in the Chaos Army, so I'll tidy that up. Or maybe Alice has already tidied it up. Okay, what else have we got? Um, Screaming Arrows. Um, Screaming Arrows, when you cast a spell, any dice that you roll for drivebacks from a Screaming Arrows spell will now cause confusion on a roll of four, five, or six. So that's that's good. That's a big buff for that spell. Very useful for disrupting plans and being annoying. Mm -hmm. Um, But it does say, note that if a unit is taken, other hits as well, it'd be necessary to roll for the screaming arrows dice separately. So if you've if you've been shot at by, by multiple targets and then had the spell cast, the drive back dice for the spell need to be um, rolled separately. Um, that that's always been the case. Actually, it's just a clarification to make the intent of the rule a bit more simple. What else? The changes to the spawn. The spawn crops up on a couple of army lists: beastmen and chaos. Um, so ups and downs here. Um, you can add spawn to a brigade, um, up to two spawn units, and that means you have a maximum brigade size of four other things plus two spawn. Mm-hmm. Um, but unfortunately, then there's a minus one. Um, well, there's a minus one command penalty unless you've got more non-spawn than spawn. Um, next thing, spawn cannot be driven back by shooting and never roll for drivebacks. Bond units must pursue or advance if victorious in combat. Um, so kind of like the fanatics. But major change there is the intention that they're they're really like a good missile shield out in front of the rest of your army. Um, whether you have them as part of the brigade, up to you. But I know many people will, ha- will have the spawn either on the front rank or in the front rank, but offset out. So in a slightly irregular formation, so that it's there as the as the missile shield. And I think that's that's quite useful. Um, spawn, they're not something you want to charge, I don't think. If you see it on the front of your opponent's brigade, you want to get in around the back. A bit nasty when they're cornered. Um, have you have you guys played this at, again with this ruling? No, yeah, no, 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 no. But uh, yeah, it, it may, yeah, you know, it does give spawn a much more viable choice. I mean, uh, the the fact that spawn have such a high save means that they can you know, they can dice anything. 
they they are three ups here, yeah, isn't that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the few so, like, things. Yeah, in... it, that there, there's no there's no neg- like you know, you can reliably roll three plus on like a whole bunch of dice in skew combat. It's like they're they're good. They're not basically yeah, say so they're not the thing that the opponent wants to attack. No. Okay, well that okay. that sounds good. Um, I'll dust off the spawn model next time I get my chaos army out. So we'll pass through all of these other things that we voted on last year. Just with one thing actually to say, the um, the version of the hunting for gore spell that's in the change log is actually the correct version. There are some um, almost final versions of the army list document which actually had a small typo in the hunting for gore spell. Um, the I think to, to give credit to Alish here, when he did both the rule book and the new army list book, everything was retyped from scratch rather than copied and pasted. Um, I'm not quite sure why he decided to do it because it's the longest way possible. But I think some a couple of errors were got. We, we tried to catch as many internally in the committee as we could. But it, so basically the advice is go to the revolution site now and download the current version of the lists. Right, what's next? Cathay. Final list approved, 2023. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I think there were changes to the list, but um, I mean, the, the list was kind of in that flux where you kind of, the, the list was the list, wasn't it? So we, we approved the list. We didn't approve the changes within the list, if that's fair to say. Yeah. And the, this is uh, has been a, lab, a big labour of love for um, Jim over the last, my goodness, five, six years, something yeah. like that. And I know that he's gone around and play tested every possible permutation of, of rules and tweaks and this and that. Um, and having it, it's just it's been very interesting for me. His thought process on how you design and refine things is um, rather different to mine. But I've learned a lot from listening to that. What happened in 22 and 2023? Um, Sherwin has made a lot of input as well into the, the what's now the final version. So, you know, it's a nice army. Um, if you want to do the Cathay army, miniatures can be got from either a, probably a combination of Magister Militum and Eureka. Um, or there's a guy in Chile called Tordo who has a Patreon and he's working his way through all the files for Cathay at the minute. Wow. Um, he, he's, got, he's a nice guy. He's been doing it for about... Um, so hello, Matthias, if you're listening. Um, he's been doing it for about 18 months now. Started off doing Tomb Kings, then progressed on to some other armies. Um, he's done quite a lot of demon army. So if you want, um, let's not invoke any GWIP. If you want the pleasure god or the skull god, the armies are there um, with all the units. Um, and he's doing the other two, so, or two other deities that might map into a universe you're familiar with. Um, and he's been doing, I think he's finished Nippon this month and Cathay shouldn't be far behind. And they're, they're nice models and they, they print really well. So get out there and try it. Nice big infantry heavy army. and. Let us know what you think. Mm-hmm. Right. So chaos spawn. Same rules as spawn. Yeah. Same as before. Dragon ogres. So there's the dragon ogres. They're now two thirty, not two fifty. Yep. Still a whole chunk of cheese though. Two thirty. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I mean, I, the amount. But when you when you start stacking things into dragon ogres, like if you have a combat character, if you have a spawn, like with the dragon ogres, the amount of da- attacks you can do in a small frontage is. It's quite a it's quite a big thing, but it's not unbe- yeah it's not unbeatable. Like it can be, can be. Just don't fight them. Don't f- the art of fighting well, without fighting. Yeah, fighting and not fighting. Or uh, how like in a recent thing like showing that had that situation where he had dragon ogres spawn and a combat character who's facing against it, and so he, he so the maximum damage they could do was kill one of his units of uh, bannermen, which was nine wounds, but he could put more than nine back on them. So that was a way of like that was a, that was a way of using the game's mechanics to like get around something. Okay. Now, so yeah. the next the next change though is good. This is yeah. good. No, trolls, yeah, trolls, trolls, and it's, it's surprising that the the Battle of the Five Armies has been around for a long old time. Now, I've got a couple of copies, but we, we haven't stolen any of their rules no. until now. No. There's some there's some elf cavalry rules and there's the rules for like yeah, but I don't know why we never went in there and kind of stole stuff more. But 
This is definitely a, a, a win-win, isn't it? Because trolls in the current game system are just a nightmare. For as long as I've played this game, we've laughed about how you just can't do anything with <laughs> fucking trolls. Eventually, they'll get in the game if you're lucky, if it goes long enough. But there was a very first game we played online, or me and Paul, uh, there was some trolls in a wood, and they never came out for the yeah. whole game. <laughs> the whole game. Because <laughs> <Okay. laughs> there was no free half pace move. They're just never coming out. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty hard. It's pretty hard to get them to go. Yeah, like, uh, but, but this yeah, is brilliant. Uh, but this, this, yeah, this is. It gives them a. It gives them a negative, but one that you can manage, you can mitigate, which suits an orc and goblin army. So it has like, so there's a character like assigned to where trolls are, just to keep them in line. Um, you know, it. Yeah, it's it's a really elegant solution to a, a troll problem. And it's a solution that the kind of people who designed the game came up with when they redid yeah, Battle exactly. of Five Armies. Because they, right, obviously yeah, didn't, yeah, right. they obviously didn't, they obviously knew trolls were hard work. So right, right. And the, the, only, the only issue I have, it's one of the tiny issues, they're actually quite reliable now, aren't they? As long as your character's 20 centimetres in front of the troll, you can give them two orders just as normal. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it, 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 basically they're just something that needs, they, you know, it's, it, it's cool, they need something that needs pers individual management, isn't it? So it's yeah. like, yeah, orcs and goblins tend to have a lot of characters. This is this is a good solution for them, and they ha and and if they get caught out of position or something, then then they have problems. It's like they you know, like trying to order yeah you know, trying to order trolls at you know, like um oh at, you know, at forty centimeters is not going to there's really not yeah you know, you're not going would you even try yeah you know, like you see you know, if you assume you're passing it so it's a and it's a way that also the opponent could could work around so it's like right okay. Um, where is characters going to be? You know, like they they're then tied to a position of that unit. So you know, you could right if I move into that character, where's he going to go? How's that affect all, all the trolls next turn? It's you know, it, it it it's not like oh, it's a it's a it's a negative that will never be in play, will never be used. No, it will get used. Uh, it will. It's an uh, you know, you could plan against it. You know, like as a as an opponent, and also and you see the rationale there make trolls a more viable unit because they had issues before and they were like yeah. you know when you i'd take trolls in orc and goblin army but i'd assume i'd never pass an order with them and they'd be half pacing it until they got somewhere where they go on initiative that was it or use them defensively mm -hmm. but yeah yeah good change have either hopefully of you ever well okay so the chaos army gets this have either of you ever seen a chaos army that included trolls um no. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, yeah, in theory, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Kudos, if you're the first, per if you play Trolls in the Chaos Army now, kudos to you. You're the first. Yeah. Well person. done. Well done. <laughs> um, is it worth mentioning the that I think the, the probably anomaly here is that the um, expensive unit that did not get reduced in points was uh, Chaos Knights. Is it? Is it not in the thing at all? No, we okay. we voted on it and we decided not to. We felt they were no. I mean, it's not in this document. They were okay, for good reason. No, oh, we, yeah. We I mean, uh, do, do, do you want me to explain the rationale why it didn't get through? Or yeah, yeah go yeah, for well, it. Because, explain, yeah. explain. Well, say what the premise was. So that so the, the, we we were reducing the price by ten percent of all the big uh, expensive units generally across the board. Yeah, but we had to vote them individually, obviously, because you can't just like wave a wand and say everything's changing. And the problem with the Chaos Warriors was people felt that the the fact that they were effectively open-ended in the amount you can take led to potentially quite exploitative list builds where you could have armies that were effectively just these cheaper Chaos Warriors. Oh, Chaos Knights, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's not Chaos Warriors, it's Chaos Knights. Chaos Knights, yes. So you'd have a minimum amount of infantry and then you'd have this unbelievably tough core of Chaos Knights with not much else. And so uh, there was a discussion about capping it to two, which uh, with hindsight would have been a sensible compromise. And if I'm being honest, it's probably where we're going to end up next year anyway. So there'd be 180 points rather than 200, but uh, with a cap of two per thousand. Because yeah, then what the worst case scenario, you're facing four units and four units of Chaos Knights are nothing to be sniffed at because that, that is a lot of pain coming your way. But potentially having unlimited, so I don't know if you could squeeze in eight units. You could definitely squeeze in six units. Mm. Can't even squeeze in okay. six. Interesting Warmaster trivia question here: Which unit can you never take the maximum allowance? Because Chaos Knights are four per thousand. Yeah, I don't so think in theory, you can get that. in theory eight hundred points. But in your first 
um, dollars and points, you've got to pay for the general, you've got to pay yep. for a unit of chaos warriors, and you've got to pay for the marauders. And there yeah. isn't there are enough points left over actually to take. So effectively, it's three per thousand. Yeah, I thought so. Um, you might just be able to squeeze in seven if you really, really, really wanted to. Um, where you limit them at three per thousand, two per thousand. Um, although the other way of looking at it is who actually takes that number of you know cavalry. I mean, a, a cavalry heavy army. Barry, as you know yourself, from your well, lots of people take lots of people lists. take um, lots of people take six units of cold ones in yeah, dark yeah, yeah. So it's not yeah. it's not unusual to go down that route. No, no lots of people I mean, take eight units, eight units so, of um, four riders. Yeah, or so whatever. People, I mean, yeah, yeah, your empire list is six units of knights, isn't it? So I, I just think I just think it was um, um, we 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 kind we kind of got to got we could have got this done if we'd have been a little bit more flexible, but for whatever reason we weren't. So it's it got it got rejected. Yeah. And that, that's a good thing about a committee. If, if it's not like uh, twenty-one people all agreeing and saying let's move on, there are some kind of heated discussions. And if you don't get two-thirds majority, you don't get two-thirds majority. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I would expect it to change next year. If I'm being honest, but because um, I think two per thousand is plenty for Chaos Knights. Personally, yeah. do you would you really want to play a yeah, game against six Chaos Knights? No, not really. Uh, so, Paul, do you want to talk us through Chaos Dwarves and what's happened? Yeah, certainly. Uh, so, Chaos Dwarves, Hobgoblin, Wolf Riders, they're a light cavalry profile. So they've got a uh, you know a change across the whole the whole system. You know, it be down to seventy five points. Um, so, talk about this discount. We haven't said how much discount, have we? Yeah, I, th I think it was five points. Yeah, like um, so um, their eruption spell. Now, this is also another another change to to basically. Spells that had a D3 random um, ability in them. Um, had, so like this spell does D3 attacks across several units. Um, that's got changed to three attacks to take away that randomness element. So the, the you know, that, that's, that spell is copied, is in like a similar spell in High Elves, for example, that's gotten that, you know, like game change across the board. So the eruption spell, like which, uh, you know, a spell affects three, it gives three attacks, not D3 randomly to various different units. It makes it then possible that you would cast it. Because if it was D3 rolling a one on the unit you need it to, doesn't really make any difference. So and, you're right, Paul, it was five points discount. Yeah, cool. Um, and then your Hobgoblin brigading change. So before Hobgoblins had problems of brigading. Uh, so uh the, the what the change was is hobgoblins and orcs have a strong hatred of hobgoblins so hobgoblins and orcs have a strong hatred of units so hobgoblins or hobgoblin wolf riders may not be brigaded with units of black orcs or orc slaves unless a warrior or blunderbuss unit is past the brigade to make hobgoblins a viable unit so that then changes them to you know so they could be have more options as long as chaos dwarves are there to like you know give give them control okay. um, there was some we could speak about one or two things that didn't happen with chaos dwarves, or do we want to leave that? Uh, what are you thinking of in particular, sir? Well, I remember there was like there was debates about two things about with chaos. Oh no, dwarves. not the leadership ten thing. Move along, sir. Move along. <laughs> there was all, <laughs> move there along. Was all, sir. There was also <laughs> time for that. Okay, there was also one about um, hobgoblins. Um, you know, like you could change out uh, a core choice of chaos dwarves for hobgoblins, like as in your as in your core choices. Yeah, that was an interesting one. I don't know why. Yeah, it would have yeah. made it cheaper, wouldn't it? Because the, the moment well, it, just gave, it gave you, it gave you an option of of list building. So it's like you have to say you have to take two units of chaos dwarves. Well, one of those units of chaos dwarves could be two units of hobgoblins. Yeah, that was it. But it didn't. It didn't get past. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, I don't think that progressed very far at all. Did it? Did it? No, it didn't, it didn't say it. Just no. didn't. It didn't. Because uh, that's the thing. So not everything that even gets suggested even gets to be voted on because it yeah. has to be nominated. There's like a process, and lots of things get discussed without even moving forward mm -hmm. okay right next beginning demons this is nice and quick are we going to mention the fact there is a change to artillery because i yeah, think that do. will be a notice noticed mm -hmm. right so the artillery where was that down there, down there. that was I don't, I don't think uh i don't think that was a 2022 change i don't know yeah, but uh, there, is, there is a change been made in that the restriction on having either or has been removed. Yeah. And so you can have quite big brigades. Now, in the same kind of respect as um, goblin armies can have quite big brigades of artillery. I mean, you can have a lot of artillery in this army now, I think. 
because they got yeah, the, so we'll they got the bolt we'll throwers as well, haven't they? They, they? Yeah, they have rolling bolt, bolt throwers, which are, I think, two per thousand. Yeah. Is that right? That's right. Um, and then it used to be one either, this is the, the Earthseeker cannon's basically a cannon, the other one's basically a stone thrower. Um, so now you can have both. So rather than two artillery, two bigger artillery pieces per thousand, or one per thousand, you now get two per thousand. So um, you can have two full artillery brigades. You can have like eight pieces of artillery. Uh, that is a whole chunk of your army, though, and they don't they don't last very long when they get charged. Yeah, well, especially if they get, get charged in the flank or back. Maybe you can get to them to get them to, to charge them. Well, that's um, it. That's always the the game, isn't it? That's the game with artillery. If you get if you get eight units of artillery taken off the board, you, you've lost the game, haven't you? It's not even remotely close. But if if they keep all eight units on the board, it's going to be quite a struggle. Also, also knowing knowing your scenery rules, uh, your know, scenery rules is going to help because now scenery, like if you mount mount something on the hill, there are things that block line of sight from a hill. So no, like knowing knowing the current, you know, the check the core changes of how scenery is will help mitigate artillery. It's like it's not always going to have a range to like it will be able to see something that fires at it. Yeah, like trees now block line yeah. of sight. Yeah, exactly. Like as in there like it's rain. You get again. It's it's it, it's like they can be mitigated by a decent amount of scenery on the table. Yeah, or you could always get that that wood elf spell and just ignore it. No stand and shoot. And just take them off. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's next? So yeah, that's a change that that went through. I think it went through this year. Okay, I don't remember voting on that, but anyway. Um, right. Demons. Nice Demons. simple. Mm -hmm. Two units have got points reductions. So greater demons now two eighty, demon beasts now two hundred. Mm -hmm. Um that's a big change for the demon beasts, actually. But the big change for both. Um this is not an army that I have actually. I have I have an unpainted version of Barry's models um somewhere in the painting queue. But Barry, you must you played with your own demon army. But Paul, I guess you have as well. Yeah, yeah. Would, this, would this make you take these units? Yeah, I take Demon Beast now, but nobody will fight them in the same way as, uh, what what are they called? Uh, the Dragon Ogres. Dragon nobody Ogres. fights Demon Beasts. They're too big and too strong. And you can regrow them. So Yeah, that's yeah that, that that's really good for de for Demons. Is, uh, if you're going to regrow a stand, regrowing a stand of Demon Beast is the thing to do. <laughs> yeah. But the Greater Demon is the same trap as your High Elf ride. I'm not interested in them. The... the the, the biggest issue with these is you cannot get to a point where you make these viable, otherwise the game really will be like that old hero hammer where you're just flying around with monsters killing everything. Yeah, I suppose, you know? I suppose it is a, it, you're right, I guess it is a balancing act because at 300 they were like pointed out, at 280, well, it, it gives them a, a more of a chance to be on the table, but where do you want it to be exactly? Because you might end up with a situation where they're suddenly undercosted, and every army would have two great demons in it, and they're dominating. Um, but yeah, it's yeah, it at least at least they're there to be tried now. So if if you, if, if they're th th two eighty, I'm still not really that interested. If they, if you start getting like two hundred, people are starting to go, oh my god, that's a lot of hitting for two hundred. Because they're like they really are like scalpels, aren't they? The amount yeah. of damage they put, the the, the the guy facing is minuscule, and they bring terror, and they've got some defensive fire. Normally, they've got like breath weapons and shit. Oh my god! Yeah, you don't. I don't want to ever see these as like viable, viable options on the table. Really, they've got to be like more of a fluff choice. Because yeah. you can't balance stuff like this. I don't think. I think when games really struggle is to try and balance things that are like deliberately like miles outside the norms. How do you balance something like that? Mm. So. Okay. It's That's good just... that it's a bit cheaper. I don't think it make any real difference, but um, I, I would never want to be in a world where these were a viable option, I don't think. Okay. Take them as a character. Just, interesting, interesting thought here, um, which I just had while you were thinking. If we were playing 3,000 point games, do, are these are these higher pointed units more viable at 3,000 and 2,000? Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. oh, I, I still, still too much of your points. No, I think cannons and stuff become the more points you play, the more stuff like cannons yeah. and artillery can get out of hand. But um, yeah, six six dwarf cannons are no joke. There's not much standing up to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Right. So nice symbol was dark elves. Hydra down to 125. Never used um, them. Never used dark elves really, but. 
I've played them badly a lot, driving gym statistics for that army down. Um, I tried to hide it in my first couple of games. Um, it's nice and fluffy, but the, the brigading restriction means that you really have to want to take it in the army, and you probably have to assign a character to babysit it. Um, Paul, you play, you, you do take the Hydra, don't you? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, because the original, like, Dark Elf model was, like, lovely. <laughs> like, mm. uh, you know, um, I mean, I've, I've found a place for it, but, it, you know, it's not, it doesn't see play in a six cold one night Dark Elf list. Mm. It, it was one of the few ones that people had talked about actually being viable, even before the points change. I, I had seen people take them, because you don't often see people take monsters, but in armies that I'd seen them, Hydra was probably the most commonly taken. Yeah. yeah, I don't. Maybe that's like Paul said. It's just like people like the model or people like the idea of a Hydra. I don't know. Yeah. And then certainly yeah. got leadership ten, haven't they? That makes a big difference. The I mean, the Dark Elf army, it's arguable, doesn't need any kind of buffing. But I think th this is a viable option. Although, again, philosophical thought here: if it was still one hundred and fifty uh, or one hundred and forty, sorry, um, but you could brigade it with um, certain unit types, does that make it more viable? I think you've got to be careful with monsters being able to be brigaded because it that that's part of what keeps their power level down is yeah. not being able to brigade them. Yeah, yeah. Because mm -hmm. now you're adding for the price of a cheaper than a combat character, you're adding something with a lot of attacks and terror into a brigade. Yeah, so. yeah. I think he knew uh, what he was doing when he invented that rule, Rick. Yeah, no, there's no, there's no question about that. It's just that these are questions that come up on the Facebook group from time to time. But what if this? What if this? Yeah. Um, it's interesting to hear your take on that. Okay, so moving on. Dogs of War, um, light cavalry down to 75. Yeah. Lions down to 135 again across the board. Um, pikemen, back to the old stat line and, and points. No, no, they got 10 points off. They got 10 points off. Okay. Ah, so, okay. That was a big change. They're now, they're only five points more than um, Halberdiers now. Yeah. I think I think pikemen are the most interesting thing of like of recent years, aren't they? In terms of like they they were something that was wanted to be changed to make basically basically make them better at what their actual role was supposed to be. They had a change, and then people felt that that change made them too good at it. You know, having so having five plus armor, you know, defensive stats against yeah, made them too strong against cavalry and other things. So now they've been changed back again, like and not to the original profile to to different. So I think in terms of as a game's development, as like mechanic mechanics, they they've been the most interesting thing. Mm. I think the problem was they became very good offensively as well. It yeah. wasn't just they were good defensively, which they obviously are because of the facing and the fact they've got defended against cavalry. It was the fact that they were they were really good going forward because they got four attacks per stand on a short base with five up armor, and they were rolling up other similarly priced infantry with ease. Yeah, I, and that, and that exactly, and that and that was changing what they were supposed to do in terms of what all the envisioned do. But it is, it's, it's a case of where you pull one lever and another thing, another thing changes on it. Yeah, but it, yeah, you know, it's, it just in terms of from, I imagine from the outside looking in, like the the back and forth of pikemen is, be, it would be the most like interesting thing of a change log. Hmm. Um, question for you both then: Do you think this is the last change we will see for pikemen? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, I think I think a change. I think a change of pikemen might be like, as in, it'd be an extreme one. But it's like uh -oh. we can't find a role for this unit that balances it, and they need to. Act, they need to. Dogs of War don't have that. They don't have pikemen. They have. They have like, I don't know. Like, they is in the whole whole concept of them changes. No, but, I, th I think got, there's quite a lot of rules we're not discussing here that are built into pikemen about yeah. how they work against cavalry and the support and stuff there, there might be some something around the support that changes i guess longer term but that's all kind of factored into the points because at 50 points they're they're pretty good value now compared yeah. to other yeah. i mean these this is unless you're getting to the range of skeletons this is as cheap as infantry gets yeah mm -hmm. So I'm just curious. I, I've watched the back and forth over the last couple of years. Um, again, this is not an army I've ever played, mm -hmm. um, just because I cannot work out what you do with the pikemen. Um, yeah. and, and the problem is they're like the signature unit for the army. One of the signature yeah. units, so you, yeah. you can't get away from them. Um, and I know we, we've struggled to try and make them work on the tabletop in the way that we would like that's balanced and, and representative. Yeah, yeah, but also because they're a signature unit, there's no cap on these. 
So yeah. you can, if you make a mistake on these, you can really, people can really go to town on them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Have all armies of them, nothing but them. I mean, like, I, you know, you know that we've never, we've made it like a thing of, what well, we don't want to invalidate people's collections, do we? Or like, or rebase them because because pikemen are based like cavalry to the short edge. So we've never wanted to like, re, like we never suggested a change where they're, they're, in, they're based as normal infantry, but they get a defended bonus against cavalry. Because that would mean rebasing them, you know, like physically. You know, so it's like it's they, yeah, they're the problem, Charles. Yes. <laughs> right, giants. We've done giants. Another giants. giant. Yeah. Right. So Oof. dwarves, 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 big winners from the changes this year. I like this. Oh, this this is good. These are good. Right. So handgunners, one unit of handgunners per thousand points can count towards a minimum requirement of dwarf warriors. So that's kind of like in, in many other armies, we've yeah. we, we did this with Empire and then we've gradually rolled it out across all the other armies. If you get a minimum, um, if, if you get a shooting unit, you can swap it for your core unit. Um, and that works out quite nicely, actually. It's, I'm not sure that's the case for Empire. I'm not sure Empire can swap Harbidius for Crossbowmen. Oh, no, sorry. Wait, so you're right. It's... it's um, it was, it, else. it was something else. It was something else. They can make the crossbow Yeah, yeah. And you, so I think this is a, a, a novel change, this one, but it's it's to kind of combat the fact that dwarf armies are really kind of boring to build because you, you spend so many points on the general and then four units of dwarf warriors and then you got your the artillery that you have to take. There's nothing left. There's no points left. Did, did we have a discussion about doing this with Chaos Dwarves as well that didn't get voted on? I didn't get voted through. I think that because they were doing, dealing the... with slaves, because it would be blunderbuss, yeah. wouldn't it? We'd get swapped yeah. in, yeah. I guess. Blunderbuss and warriors. But they were talking about doing it with a different unit. Yeah. Goblins yeah. or slaves. I can't remember which one it was. We Hub talked goblins. about it earlier. Okay. Hub goblins. I Hub thought goblins. there was this as well. But okay. Well, let's see how it goes for the dwarves. Um, yeah, slightly more varied build. And this it was right... definitely discussed with ogres, but it didn't get any traction at all because yeah, because people didn't want that. That was it. Yes. That was it. Perfect. Yeah. We made enough changes to ogres. We'll come to that. <laughs> um, right, so that's the hand gunners. Um, Rangers. This is, this is really interesting. This 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 um, this allows different list building with with dwarves and different different things to do. So basically, don't, we can shortcut this, can't we, and just say that rangers are now have the ambush rule in effect. So so one unit per foot per, per thousand points doesn't you know has the um, yeah. Has the ability to infiltrate, so there's no <clears throat> there's no points change. So the most you could take in a normal game would be two units of rangers, one per thousand points. Like that has infiltrate, so you could have two units infiltrating, and that really that makes dwarves. That makes me want to play dwarves, like you know, and to do that definitely, like is in yeah, because because as you say, Barry, like the dwarves as a build had been like long worked out in terms of like this is how you build dwarves, how you play dwarves. Um, you know, and the only real variation in it is, is, is whether you go mono warrior and cannons are like like just like that, or do you or do you have anything else? Um, but this will this will change it up because with their command ten, it gives them an ability to project you know project power out into the battlefield. And like who knows? Like you know, like a, is in like you know, it could, I think it's fun. I think it's a great one, and it's like it was one that was tried before because it was like yeah, we voice styled it like miners. But now, yeah, as in there are models that people make of miners, you know, like looking characters, and this is how I'd do it, you know, as in, or if you wanted to, or I, or have a unit has a mixture of miners and rangers in it, you know, like why not, you know, it's a so I yeah I re, yeah I am double plus one to this to this uh, change for me. Yeah, the issue rangers had is in uh, in revolution they lost the key ability, which was the yeah. ability to pursue things. Yeah, they couldn't stay as they were because, like, I'd played events with dwarves where it never was the right choice to do. You, you'd have some rangers, and it was never the right choice to pursue with the rangers. And nothing like, else. It never, it, it just never came up. It just never. Yeah. It was never like, okay, I could do this, but it's not the right. It's not the right move to make. So, so if you've got your infantry in a flank, you pursue with everything, and if it was in the front, you can't because you're just sending rangers in to die. Yeah, it, yeah. So it, it, you know, unless you had multiple rangers, and you just basically it just I just never came across it. Like, and they were so they were paying points for all they never used, and they had to. So something had to change with them. 
Yeah, like now, they, now they've got five apartment and shooting. They've got quite a lot to bring to the party, haven't they? Yeah, no, definitely. Like, as in, in these again, it, will be, it will be table dependent, like in terms of like, yo, know, and again, you can play around. You can, the opponent could do something about that. Be like, oh, hang on. There's a, there's a, yeah, there's a very good chance that like those rangers will turn up like in that wood. And then what does that mean to me? You know, it, it, you know, it gives, yeah, it gives, yeah, you know, and plus it's great for scenario play as well. Gives dwarves like an ability to like dash forward and capture things. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I think for, for listeners with long memories, the reason that the Rangers are allowed to pursue cavalry was in the original version of the rules where you had unlimited rounds of combat, the dwarves had no cavalry and therefore needed something that could actually pursue the cavalry. So the change from revolution to two, fix two rounds of combat, um, that didn't sort of nerf the usefulness of that ability. Um, for me, this is actually, I think, very interesting. We've, we've gone around with ma dwarf miners, essentially infiltrators for quite a while. Um, and without wishing to add a new unit type to to a list, I think it's a very nice way of doing it. Yeah. And for those of you listening, if you want models for this, uh, Magister Militum do some dwarf miners. If you want good old school lead, uh, Varus miniatures. Um, that's a guy called Florian Wartman. Florian's actually been doing some nice stuff. He's got a Kickstarter that just finished for some Norse dwarves. Um, I got the first lot of files for that this week, and they're very very nice indeed. Prior to that, on his Patreon, there were some dwarf miners. And they're again really, really nice. So again, hello Florian, if you're listening, um, keep up the good work with the dwarves. Um, because again, another there's another I forgot to mention him earlier, another person in Year of the Dwarf who's done a dwarf army. So if you want a Norse, yeah, it is Year of the Dwarf. Um, not Year of the Plague, <laughs> even that was three three years ago. But you know, a, nice, nice work. And if you want some more north northern style, north style dwarves, um, go check out so that's Varus miniatures on. Uh, Patreon and Gumroad and other channels. Okie doke. Right, excellent. Empire, stay the same. Look at them. Empire, yep. constant. Um, Phil Janners wins the tournament with, and then we'll be OP and we'll have to tone them down. Uh, well, I mean, he, yeah, so like he, he, for him, it was the ability to use dogs of war. Yeah, it's in, yeah, regiments of renowned, sorry, regiments of renowned units. Yeah, but like that's the, yeah, they had, the, the Empire had no changes, but. If you if you're playing an event that allows regiments renown, Empire can like benefit from that. Okay, mm -hmm. right. Wow. We, need, we need to talk about reg regiments renown right at the end, actually. Okay. Right. So goblins, walk spell. Um. Again, this is a clarification. Um. So any any goblins at all, no matter what they're riding, squigs, yeah. wolves, bump wagons, not anything that's not a green skin. Um. So that's pretty good. Um, this is actually in the both in the orc list and the goblin list, but met, some of those units don't appear in the in the orc list, obviously, because orcs don't have squig herds and stuff like that. Was the was the change? This was another one where there was um, you could substitute squig herd for not for for goblins. Is that in here? I'm just thinking oh, that there was it is. two years ago, yeah. That yeah. was wow. a couple of years ago. It's because of the confirmatory votes. I thought that was more recent than that. But... Yeah, that, that's why we have the change log like this, yeah. just so that we don't forget these things. Um, right, so the wax credit, that, that just clarifies things quite nicely. The trolls we've talked about before. Um, I think you, were, you said earlier, Barry, that the Battle of Five Armies, we've sort of ignored it. And I think the reason for that is that many of us might have thought that it was kind of like sort of War Master Light, yeah. Or it came, or a watered down version, which kind of came out at a moment when the sort of Warmaster, plastic Warmaster, was it sort of in the setting sun of its period. Mm. And I think there may be some other good, you know, nuggets to go and mine God, for in that rule book. The one, the one, because when you take the expansion for the, there was a lot, quite a lot of metal stuff that's like crazy expensive. Obviously, there were the rules for those as well. There were there were quite a few units considering there were only two factions, mm -hmm. good and bad. Yeah, I, I'm going to get my copy off the shelf this afternoon and have a read. Okay, so the trolls, nice idea. Let's see how that goes. Giants, we talked about. I mean, it is, let's be honest, it is a big, big buff to trolls. We haven't made them more expensive, and they've yeah. got a massive buff potentially. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if 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 trolls rule the day, then we may. If we see trolls <laughs> in chaos armies, then, we'll know <laughs> then you'll know. Then then you'll know. <laughs> okay. Oops. <laughs> Okay, high elf, right. dragon rider. High elves, dragon rider. Now to only two hundred and seventy points. He got an extra bit off. I'm sure the other guy went to two hundred and eighty, didn't he? Yeah, Why but did he get... yeah, but like, where do they start at? 
I, or were they both? Uh, yes, yeah, but it's true. It's true actually. If they both started at 300, they have changed. Yeah. yeah whatever. Mm-hmm. Still makes no difference. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, I'll I'll definitely be trying it, but you know, it's uh, you know, it's it's uh, yeah, it's not gonna it's not gonna make a competitive like high elf list. I think. Was it Jeff that had five dragons? He didn't try it once. Yeah. <laughs> five dragons. Yeah. <laughs> Two of these and three of the characters. Three characters. Yeah. <laughs> didn't work. The army, no, the army of Calador, wonderful. It did not work, you know. Like, um, and uh, you know, so there are these things again, and the same with the storm of stone. So that get that route, route back to the chaos dwarf spell, which had basically the same mechanics, you know, changed the three attacks. Because this storm of storm of stone was a six up spell and did literally nothing and took forever to resolve. Uh, yeah. I mean, you get a reroll because you're high elves, but man alive, this spell was rubbish. I mean, a lot of the high elf spells are rubbish. If I'm being honest, but this one was exceptionally rubbish. I mean, what do they do apart from get you to shoot twice the high elf spells? Um, thinking. There's the the weird one where you get one attack per unit for a thirty centimeter bubble, which is like. Yeah, light yeah, light of battle. Yeah, they weren't. They weren't. They, none of them were game changing. I think yeah, the being able to shoot twice spell um, was the only one. But it, I think how how good it was depended on your build. If you'd taken the bolt shooters, that was quite good. But or if you got the, the, those units of readers in just the right position, then that did make it quite effective. But but this spell was like off the charts of like not doing it. You don't even get drive backs from them. I don't even know what it was meant to do. Well, it's add... like combat. It adds to co- combat. So you'd need at least two units fighting. Like, you know, to make it even... But that's a six-up spell. How often are you going to co- get... You're not using a ring of magic on it, are you? No, I, I also really have a ring of magic spell. <laughs> no. no. Anyway. Okay, so let's it's, see how it's we better. That. So that's good. It's better. Right, right Kistler, this is a couple of quite interesting changes here. Um, we, we'd voted previously that the war wagon can move five centimetres when lagered up, i.e. in that defended position that is almost impossible to take down um and go you know going back to classic warmaster you needed to be going in with something like 30 attacks or 28 attacks to stand any chance of taking the war wagon down yeah. um, in multiple units of combat and restricting the combat to two units made it even more difficult two, two rounds yeah yeah so the change here four hits not five, and the points go down by 15, which I think that's fair. We'll see how that plays out with Kislev armies. Because um, that four hits is per stand. So it's like eight hits yes, for the unit. Hits. And it was 10. 10 was mental yeah, for defended was, and three up armor or whatever the bloody hell it's got. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. it, was, it, was, it was always defended when it was lager. That That's what made it more difficult because you had to go in with a stupendous number <laughs> to try and take it down. No charge and, bonuses and oh my yeah. God. Yeah. So this is um we need these sort of changes. Alice has done a lot of this because Kislev is one of his um sort of go-to armies. Uh, and I know Jim has had a lot of input in this because he's played Kislev a lot, as we all know. So we'll see how that goes. Um so this is not a buff. It looks like a point reduction, but it's it's to compensate for the fact that we've made them t- like quite a lot more killable, yes. hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's it's fair. Yin and yang. Yeah. Um there's, there's uber fanatics but very squishy uber fanatics Mm -hmm. Uh, so you can know what's the difference between these and a fanatic they've just got have they got an extra attack one extra attack no, still sorry, one, though, one, it, but... no, it was five. There were five attacks, but they were four wounds. So it was five, it's, it's, five that's four, the same zero, point. not five, three, zero. But that's the same as uh, troll slayers. They're just troll yeah. slayers, then, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, five, four, zero. Yeah, troll slayers, 90 points. But troll slayers are slightly different. They get extra attack for against uh, mon- you know, extra attack against monsters, while bears are getting a plus one attack in the same route, you know, like, uh, you, know, for, you know, monsters and chariots. Okay. Mm-hmm. Slightly yeah. different. I mean, basically, it's it's cha- it's cha- it's changing what the bears are all about and how they fit in the Kislev army. Like, uh, you know, so they would be they would be good operating on their own, like against like you know, rather than leading an attack. 
Yeah, they but they they were expensive for what they were. They were 105 yeah. or something. And, and no, I don't think I ever saw a unit of bears in any Kislev army. Um, I, I saw them, and I, I, I had to feel, I had to apologise to the fellow I was playing against. It was at the uh, north of the border. Because when I read the stat line and what they did, it said these are awful. <laughs> they don't do anything. <laughs> They were, he, anyway, he took them because he liked them, but he yeah. said they were awful yeah. as well. They were lo they're love they were lovely models. Yeah. Um, anyway, so anything, so they they can now be brigaded with anything you want. That's important because the brigading restriction was another big problem with them. Um, they can only support each other. Uh, they must pursue, um, which means that once you fire them in, you're never going to get them back. Mm. Um, and they're only defended in dense terrain. Um, rather than other things. So you can't hide your bears behind a wall and say they're defended behind the wall. They have to be in woods or something mm. like that. But, I guess, yeah. yeah, okay. No, go on, sorry. No, no, it's fine. I, I, I said if you could find some way of using a spell or something to make them defended, it wouldn't work because... Ah, that's true as well, yes. Okay. Okay, we'll see if people like bears now. Better models out there for Well, that. you can't like them any less, let's be honest. <laughs> well, that's true, yes. Right, lizard men. Barry, you're Mr. Lizard Man, so John talk Well, about from this. back in the day, I still didn't take Stegadon. It's possible now. It's possible I'd take a Stegadon now because 25 points is a big discount. And they they certainly are very, very difficult to put down without uh, like cannons or something. Mm. A lot Fanatic, of. Lot fanatics, of... you can usually do the job if you can get, if you can get them in. Who? Fanatics. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. I mean, they're a big old lump with terror. And um, I mean, with these things, we've talked about it earlier. You don't ever want to get to the position where people are taking like max stegodons no. in this, or max other big monsters. Because if you're if you're building a Lisbon army, if you've got two stegodons and some cold ones and your minimum, that's probably your army done. There's been very little left. Mm. I've been thinking with this. I mean, there's basically with lizard men. There's two possible builds. Um, there is the tournament build, which is your one with eight um, sources and you know, maximum cavalry, maximum flyers, which is it's a it's a competitive army. And it, yeah, it, but the flyers it, are getting toned down quite a lot at it, the moment. It ha it has its weaknesses, but it's it's a good army, fun to play with, not necessarily so much fun to play against. Then you've got the other version of lizard men, where you do two stegodons, and that's the one you play if you want to have fun. Um, it's not it's not competitive at all, but it's a good we'll laugh see. with the Stegadons. If I, I don't, I don't think an extra fifty points is going to make it make it a tournament winning. No, no, I agree. But um, if they started to come down further than this, like to that two hundred point magic point mark, I mean, bloody Rhinox Riders are two hundred points, two hundred twenty points, aren't they? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, what, what, the, so, what know. are you going to spend your extra fifty points on? Can you get two units of skinks for that? No, more <laughs> skinks to hide in a. Hide Maybe in you a can spot. take some salamanders, which I never take. But we <laughs> <laughs> well, now you oh, would, yeah. Barry, because it's because this rule we're changing of salamanders make. Them... Well, you can you can have a third stegodon, don't you? Because you could have your big man on a stegodon. Yeah, exactly. Three stegodon lists. One general, you're never going to put it. Yeah, I'd... Well, he okay, doesn't do anything, does he? Get him in. What's he do? <laughs> End the game if you lose the Stegadon. They're, right, Salamanders can now stand and shoot. I never really understood why they couldn't stand and shoot. <laughs> never took them anyway. Yeah, yeah, you can't have ever used them, Barry. <laughs> I did when I was when I, when I was first starting out because I bought an army and to make two thousand points I had to use everything, mm -hmm. including these. And then I went out and bought some other stuff because I, I even though it was really expensive to buy lizard men back then because you just couldn't use these fellas. <laughs> I still don't know what you'd use of. Why would you make your worst unit more expensive? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a. Yeah, I think I think the problem with the salamanders is not the salamanders themselves. It's what you would attach them to, which has to be some skinks. And unless okay, so unless you had a brigade with a stegodon surrounded by skinks, you might consider the salamanders at that point, just to make it a bit harder to get something in to kill off the stegodon but <laughs> there's too many ifs and ifs and ifs and ifs just adding more more and more points into this black hole that's <laughs> so yes. you've got this unit that you never want to see combat and you give it another 25 points per unit to make it slightly less shit in combat which you never want to see yeah sounds perfect <laughs> but now at least they can stand as a shoot but yeah hooray right moving on <laughs> oh this is a big one 
Right, Nippons. This okay, big, big. It's probably one of the biggest changes across the board of an army list. Um, we had a developmental Nippon list, which we sort of theory hammered and then put out um, in the middle of the lockdowns, actually, and it seemed to be pretty good. But and this sort of came out of a podcast episode that you guys did at the beginning of the lockdowns or somewhere around there, um, just before. Anyway, the logic there was that you had basically a um nip a bretonian style breakpoint but applied to an infantry army so only certain infantry units i.e the samurai and a couple of others counted towards the break and then you had lots of demon stuff and other not chaff but things that didn't count problem with that major exploit take your minimum units of samurai which is i think six quite a big chunk of the army you would hide it in a big forest or two small forests and then the other stuff would run around doing the fighting, so the expendable stuff. So two big differences between this and the Bretonian list. Bretonians, you can't hide your cavalry in a forest. And the Bretonian army, the chaff is terrible, unlike the stuff here, because they only were pretty decent. And the flyers were decent and all the other stuff. So back to the drawing board, unfortunately. Um, so what we now have is an army where all the units now count to break. Uh, Jim and I play tested quite a few variations where the samurai might have counted for double, like the Romans and some of the ancient lists. And we found it was just too complicated. These just go for a simple, straightforward break point. Um, the Ronin have a fanatic profile. Um, we tried a lot of variations for this. We we may still make some changes there, but for now, the Ronin are the one, the fanatic profile is the one that fits least badly with what we wanted to do. Um, we've now called them Mikata. Mikata kind of means friends or allies, I believe. Um, and the logic there was so that um, people who've got warrior monk units in their collections can use them in that context. Mm -hmm. Um, Kamainu, which used to have the demon hound profile, are not have now got basically the dire wolf profile and a big points reduction, so same points as dire wolves. Um, with the big advantage, they're not unstable as well, um, which is fine. Um, army special rule have been added so we mitigate a little bit against demonic instability this army has no ability to cast spells um so it's kind of like dwarf runesmith style anti-magic so what's the special rule chris the, the special is if you have your wizard within 20 centimeters you get plus one on the oh, okay. uh, plus one on the on the instability table so if you, if you basically the, the demonic units if you keep the wizard really really close to them they're not going to evaporate you might get some stands back but it's you know, it, it, you know, because you don't have a, they, they have this instability, but they don't have the spell to summon it back like the demons do. But um, you can still get it back from the table, I guess. Yeah, you can get it back. You you stand more chance of getting it back. From the, that's the only way you're going to get it back. But you stand more chance if you have the um, Shugenja, who's not a wizard but functions like that. Um, you can have them within twenty. I should, for this, give a lot of thanks to uh, Matt Kozolowski and Dave Sisko and their group out in Massachusetts. A lot, a very, very, very big chunk of the play testing for this list um, and the final sort of queuing and throwing was done by them. So a very good international effort within the community, which is kind of what this whole process was supposed to um, showcase. Um, this is probably, at this and Cafe, there are probably two other episodes, aren't they? To go through and talk about them. Mm -hmm. but yeah go out go out go i can get out. we need another episode really to talk through this yeah yeah uh, but i think i think one of the major rules is missing on this little discussion here that, what's that? that they get like a bonus one to the break yes yeah, that's right isn't it? ah yes yeah what's it called um, i don't know on, honor and discipline this is yeah, one of the like things that, that the, the american guys have put forward that their withdrawal point is basically plus one so yeah. if you if your break point should have been nine it becomes ten they're a little bit harder to get off the table. Um, although if you if you if you overdo those dire wolves, your break point erodes pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah I mean it's certainly another way of um, dealing with break because um, rather than using the Bretonian style, yeah, completely changing how break works. Uh, so I mean, I'm, yeah, maybe maybe it's something we can uh, adapt to, and different armies break at different points. Maybe, maybe just spitballing. High elves aren't leadership ten, but are harder to break. Who knows? Yes. Who knows? Well, you mean, you to... mean they're easier to break? No, harder they're to break. They're more disciplined. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. they have, they have like plus two to break. Yeah, right. Okay. Who or knows? The, or, or they're a dying race and they will withdraw sooner because they oh. cannot suffer yeah. the casualties. Yeah, break minus one or minus one or minus, minus one to break. break. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Why is the why is the break a fixed number? 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, yeah, and the, it's not my idea, but I, yeah, as that as an idea, but it's, I think it's a really good idea for how to how to address some army list, isn't it? Is it like you adjust their break value? Yeah, so yeah, I mean, we've opened the door to it now. So if yeah. the door's open, then look, we, we, it's certainly something we can explore. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you can't, you can't, you can't say like a nip on a special bunnies; they get plus one break, but no. nobody else can. No, have no. It. Oh. But it, the I doors open. The doors open. It can be applied to other armies, and, and yeah. I know we've had some discussions about high elves keeping their command ten, but they break yeah. at one or two points less. For me, that I think solves the problem in a very elegant and fluffy way. Okay, we will we, we'll certainly see. Yeah, they certainly yeah. wouldn't want to lose their men, would they? Well, elves or whatever oh. they are, not men. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Anyway, what else have we got? Um, yes, thanks again to Matt and Dave and all their crew. Um, hopefully, we can get some games in together sometime. These are good ones. Here we go. Right. First Norse. two are easy. First two are easy. Yeah. Right. Mammoths, hundred and eighty. Um, that's a good points value for a mammoth mm -hmm. i think we're already, okay already one of the more viable monsters but i mean again i don't think it's going to do anything terribly bad no hopefully less, less words. right so valkyries and the horn are resounding which was which before was such a weird like mechanic really like yeah and then the rules that were you know like were just weird how many paragraphs of special rules were there for how you summon the Valkyries? Forget about <laughs> it. It's gone. Too many. It's gone. Like, those days, are, they're, they're like pandemic days now. Those days are gone. I'm not. We're not going back there again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so now Valkyries are just a, a, a retemplating of um, the Bretonian flying knights. Grail knights, yeah. Flat Pegasus, Pegasus knights. Pegasus knights, yeah. And the Horde of Resounding just becomes a chariot mount. It's it's actually a pay wagon. I think it's been tempted. Oh, is it a pay wagon? wagon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same rules as a pay wagon. Uh, but it can only be used by a shaman. So you're just moving from eight to nine for one turn, like the paymaster. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which is a bit of a shame because when we were in Bruno, I saw the, somebody had modelled one of the Czech guys had modelled the most beautiful um, horn of resounding with um, a Valkyrie flying out of this horn that he would just summoned. <laughs> that way, it looked beautiful. I just put it in the unit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think he'll keep it in his army, but it's just, I looked at that, that's a nice way of doing it. Well done. It, he'll still be happy. He'll still be happy with the changes. because well, I think just... he was happy with the changes. Absolutely. Oh my God, we got the, we got the right, ogres. <laughs> right, ogres, ladies I, and gentlemen, are the. I had very ogres. little to do with the ogres, I've got to be honest, apart from voting it's on them. Actually, me too. From I've, as, I've, I've had my season with ogres and put them back in the box. <laughs> But, there was a uh, lot of changes to ogres. Right, so let's go through them. So gorgers now are infiltrators. 535 five at 110, maximum one per thousand. And you can infiltrate them. So and another ambush unit like range. Another actually. ambush unit, yep. One That's per thousand. A, that is a meaty profile for an infiltrating unit. Yeah. Um, so I predict many gorgers will be taken this year, Barry. You better get some of your... Um, what are they called? Savage Kin from your range? Cast uh, up and ready. Yeah, something like that. So are, are they very different to rangers? They've got they've swapped to, they've got some extra attack. They've lost uh, they've the got, hit. They've got extra attack, less hit. They haven't got a crossbow. They haven't got a shot with a crossbow. But it, the palms the same. Yeah, it's, it's um it's the it's if they infiltrate and say you pull off a second order and they're charging somebody's flank or whatever, it's like it's yeah, the amount of attacks they will do will like smash through stuff smash through. so were the were the rangers restricted in their numbers which yeah, range, so maxi, range maximum restricted one, per to, yeah, one per thousand also i mean people have, have got additional rangers in the in the collection that's just like tough tiddles for now until no no you're you're with the dwarves you're allowed you're allowed whatever number of rangers you're allowed but you're only allowed one per thousand that can deploy. But you're going to ambush but you can have yeah. additional ones all oh, right okay in the way. right okay i understand now so yeah, it's like it's like the beastman. You're allowed so many gore and ungore yeah. or beastkin or whatever it is, but only a certain amount going to ambush. Mm. That's it. This is a different right. way. It's just limited to one per thousand, which is I'm pretty sure where the stat line was anyway. Yeah, this is exciting. This makes me, this on its own makes me want to get my ogres out of the box and play. Yeah, them well, no, again, again, because like what what were before they before we changed it? What were gorges? They were just another heavy infantry profile weren't they that is like oh, how different are they from ogres now they were, they were they were fanatics yeah is it, but they say, like, is in, what, what were they what were they doing that was different? i don't think they were infantry 
I think they were monsters. Oh, they monsters. Could chase, okay. They but could yeah, chase. Yeah. They they didn't they didn't really they didn't really get used at all. Now they could chase cavalry. Now there's something that different. Yeah, nice. ogres don't have a yeah yeah, yeah the best the generalist command nine. They don't have you know they can't abuse an infiltrating rule like a, a command ten guy could. But this gives them something different, doesn't it? It go, it doesn't it like it is right okay. And in an ogre army where you are points heavy on everything really um this yeah i think again this is really, really interesting you could have definitely different builds of ogres now the only issue would be you need a third character in order to use these kind of things yes yeah you can't be doing this with a two character setup i don't think no that's true um my prediction for 2023 with all these infiltrating units we're going to see the crown of command popping up a lot more well yeah yeah so when we come on to skaven i'll be speaking about that yeah <laughs> yeah mm. Let's we'll see how it goes. I think that'll be fun. Um, right, what else? Spells. Spells are now 30 centimeters. Makes um, sense. That was one of mine. A, thank you, Paul. This is this is a good change. Thank you, Paul. Honestly, I think it's, it's been discussed in previous years, and this year it finally got some traction. I never understood why they were. You've got barely any points for a wizard, even if you've got a wizard. He's still got like, he's not like a goblin. He's got to be ordering shit. He can't be yeah. off the front doing nothing. And the spells are 20. It's like, Jesus Christ, this is impossible. You can never cast the spell. And there weren't such amazed ball spells as well. No. So yeah, you never you never took the the butcher, did you? No. You took the only reason I took a, a wizard was to get a dispel scroll. That's it. <laughs> mm. Right. So uh, spells thirty, perfect, easy. Yeti. Right. Yetis. The Yetis are now basically the same profile as bears. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah, troll slayers or whatever. So whatever. With it, with us, well, with a small um, restriction on support. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, it's fine. No problem there. Two per thousand. New unit. Uh, so this, saber yeah, trust. I think it's the first time we've ever done a brand new unit, isn't it? I think. Um, yep. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure Blackgate are going to be doing it. I think the fucking <laughs> arse has fallen out of that. I'm not sure I'm putting any more money in there. Maybe we'll have to have a Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> Go, it is the way, Barry. It is the way. It is the um, way. It is. Yeah, I right. saw a kick. Oh, I shouldn't go off on a tangent. I saw a Kickstarter. Does anybody remember BattleTech? Vaguely. I know what it is. Oh, yeah, yeah miniatures it, yeah. game. Like six million. It's on six million. There you go. Mm. And nostalgia sells. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, saber tusks. Right. So basically, saber tusks. These, these are um, three three zero cavalry at forty points. They're basically. Um, Chaos Hounds, yes, hounds. but, but okay. you only allowed one per thousand. You see the fish head, man. You know the Star Wars fish head with yeah. that meme. It's a trap. It's a trap. <laughs> it's you've got so little break. It's like uh, you've got these nobblers you can't hide. I mean, they might do some work early doors if you're lucky, but god damn, you have so little break in an ogre army. <laughs> I, I, it, it's not, I, it wasn't. It wasn't something I suggested. But I like the reason, the... right now, th th this this has been around for a while. Um, I tried to propose this a couple of years ago, it got completely shot down. Um, I mean, in worst case, you don't take them, there's nobody making you take them, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, it's just another couple of things, yeah. I mean, it's, I, I would be cautious of how I use these because, yeah, the break points with the ogres is razor thin and chucking two points with the way you, you, you can't really do that. Um, but let's see how it goes. Yeah, um, yeah. Because people complain about, oh, you know, my vampire cat army gets killed because of the dire wolves, or my beastman army loses because I've taken too many hounds. Well, don't don't take so many of them then. Yeah, I mean, God, is it easier yeah, to yeah, kill exactly. two units of saber tusks or two units of rhinox? I'll take the yeah. two saber tusks, please, sir. Give me four <laughs> nobblers on that, and I've broken you. So. <laughs> it's, right. it's, it's, yeah, I mean, I understand so, that it gives you something to do early game. In that you've got some reach that aren't that, that, that are kind of disposable. But also, it gives you list building options because there isn't many. There aren't many cheap things there, are there? No. Really? Nobblers. Yeah, yeah. There's not, there's, that's it. Yeah. So this gives you something else, and it's a profile that is in the game already. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And if you want to take them, take them. But um, yeah, I, yeah. yeah. Okay. Your your Janus so, player, even though this was kind of his idea, he 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 never goes down this cheat route, does he? With ogres, he has like just like the big stuff. Mm. Just bulls, iron guts. That's it. In, in if you're listening and wondering where do you get the models for this from, um, Barry, one of your one of the characters in the Black Git range looks very nice as a um, character to to 
to the the, the beast handler. Um, miniatures themselves, Magic Similitum have a couple of, sort of in their ancient creatures range that might look quite good. Um, so you're looking for sort of tigers and things like that. Um, if you're in the printing world, again, Varus Miniatures, um, Florian has a nice range. Of, actually, he did the models a couple of weeks ago. Um, and there's also an ogre character who looks very fluffy. If you, if you wanted to have one of your uh, tyrants modelled as somebody who, you know, looks like he's brought all his dogs out with him, um, then there's a nice miniature there as well. Okay. Cool. Onwards, onwards. Uh, Giants, easy. Rhinox, yeah. this is my this is my favourite change. Because mm -hmm. you have to take her. You don't want to spend 220 points on Rhinox, but you have to have two. I know Janice doesn't, but then you're playing a very linear game, aren't you? You're playing a defensive, I'm in terrain, you've got to come and kill me game. Mm -hmm. yeah. You've saved yourself 40 points, because I'm going to take two units anyway. So, so now you can take a unit save with us. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Uh... Yes, sir. Right. So ogres now look like a really fun army to play. Um, you can buy the whole army um, minus the saber tusks from blackgateminiatures.com. <laughs> um, please buy them because Barry's put a lot of work into that project. Hey, don't worry about really it. It's like, the, models. it's like the thingy, isn't it? The um, salad cream thing. I've got to say, it's, it's going out of business. It's going out of business soon. <laughs> buy it now. <laughs> buy your salad cream now. However, I, I, I didn't do it for money. <laughs> no, that was good. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, great for that. <laughs> right. Anyway, orcs and goblins. Why? Because we got we got we're already at um, eighteen minutes to twelve. Right. Okay. So why we talked about trolls, we talked about giants, we talked about that. Yep. So they just changed it. We had talked in other armies. Um, the trolls. I think that let's see how they come along. That could be some quite good fun. Better read up on that regenerate room. Right, Mister Winter. Hello. This is my Gavin. time. <laughs> Off you go. So Skaven, uh, so the they... let's just say firstly that all these got through because Paul didn't suggest any of them. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, plague plague monks just had a basically clarification. Um, or that there's no, they're actually not different. They're just clarified to be better written their rules. So move on. Okay, um, so they're not the same as fanatic. It's probably how everybody played them anyway. Yeah. So warp lightning cannons um, didn't have a place in the army at all. Were terrible. <laughs> Just, they were terrible. Like, couldn't use them. So now they have uh, now they've been changed to be stat line of a bolt thrower, uh, except they can move 20, which is necessary because the whole because otherwise again they'd have no place uh because they, they just get left behind. Um and they needed a needed a negative because they had a buff which is 20 centimeters of movement. So if you run a double one to hit or multiple ones, um yeah, they become confused. And now that does matter. So I I used all of these in Bruno, these rules. Um so I was like, yeah, cool. A couple, you know, so having four stands of warp lining cannons doing three, six, nine, twelve attacks out does something. Um, but then rolling multiple ones to hit meant they were confused in my turn. It meant that the opponent I couldn't move, as in I couldn't move them my next turn, and that did cost them their that cost the brigade often their die because of that. So they couldn't reposition. So you have to roll each uh, unit separately. So you, you roll, roll each dice. unit separately. Yeah, yeah. So like, so this. Um, so, you know, this unit rolls six dice. I've got two ones. They're confused. Um, and then if even if they even if only one's confused, what are you leaving that one behind? It's like it is actually that does matter. That negative really matters. It like they can still shoot. Yeah, they can still shoot. Basically, your next turn, you can't order them. So you can't yeah. react. Yeah. Um, so scroll on down. Um, the gutter runners. Yeah. So what they they've gone down to 60 points. So their min max has changed so that you can't have. I think it was min, it was four, so you got eight in the gut runners before. But now, what this means is that they they can be ordered outside of under the lash rule. So, um, you know, so so that makes gutter runners again again a viable choice because before you could order them, you could try and bring them on as an infiltrating thing, but then you're under the lash meant that you could never really order them again unless you had sent a character off. Really, and you really hedge your bets. You're going to pass an order or something, or that, or that ambush was so close to your rest of your army. Did it really make a difference? Um, this is this makes them viable. This makes them usable again. Like, is it like they they will see they'll be in they'll be in a a future Skaven army list of mine, which is yeah, fantastic. They seem, yeah, they seem they seem relatively good value at sixty points. Yeah, hey, yeah. Now, it's a, there's a small typo. It says artillery, Chris. Not not it's a big deal. But um, where sorry, a good to run as type artillery. But um, oh. Oh yeah, yeah. You might as well correct it while you're here. Yeah, because yeah, I'll use this as the basis for next year's one. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. 
this this is good actually. Um, we, of all the infiltrating troops, the gutter runners are always the hardest to use because of the under the lash rule. So I think this makes them more interesting. So Skitterly got so got changed because it was a spell that you could would never need to cast because it was useless, and that changed to Wither, which is a debuff spell which has a place again. So that was that's all that's all fantastic because it's changing something that was never used to something that you might use. Yeah. Yep. Carry on. Yep. So that's it. Okay, um, and I'll speak about like what didn't uh, you know so. What hasn't what hasn't changed is like so there was talk about a screaming bell being an upgraded like character mount as in like what the screaming bell is currently changing to a character mount for a grace here um it's doing the same effects but mount so rather than a, a unique machine that was um brought in uh you know it was a character mount I really liked it personally as a character mount but you know now but, but I was did still it, did it not become like the balloon in the artillery dwarf list in that it was a really irritating buff that you could never get rid of. Kind of, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, you know, so but I would still, yeah, you know, I would still use the old rules of because it it wasn't there wasn't its effects weren't any different. Just how it was used on the table, like you can't right get it off the table is what I'm trying to say. Can you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, although I never managed to kill a screaming bell yet, I have never managed. It was possible to remove the thing from the table. Yeah, yeah. But as a character mount, it's not that straightforward you to get rid of something. Yeah. Um, so that's great. Uh, the other thing about Skaven, I would say, uh, yeah, no, it's a, it's you know, so Skaven had evolved to the only way really to play them like competitively was to get like a break twenty clan rat army, which I didn't really particularly enjoy using. It wasn't it wasn't fun to be played against. It was just like an absolute horde uh, that rolls forward and does the game. Um, now it's like now a Skaven list would have everything back in it again. Because the units that couldn't you couldn't use are viable are useful again, and you get a lot more interesting army out of it, and a more interesting game out of it. So um, yeah, fantastic, fantastic changes for Skaven uh, because yeah, it's in for the reasons I've just all said. Okay, onwards, Chris. Excellent. Onwards, right, nice and quick. Tomb Kings, a um, couple of points changes on the monsters. Sphinx is down to one hundred thirty-five. Bone Giants down to one hundred and ten. Um, again, we'll see whether that makes people take them. Um, my experience of playing Tomb Kings is that they're lovely mo- they, that these sort of things are lovely models but you're not really going to take them because they're not that effective and it's too much of a point sink um, but I don't know do you ever take those things in your I know you play Tomb Kings occasionally I think the Paul. Sphinx is good defensively Sphinx, I've Sphinx never liked good the defensively. yeah okay Witch Hunters don't right. change Witch Hunters nothing changes Wood Elves nothing changes Vampire cards, nothing changes. And Siege Engines, those didn't change either. So that's it. Good stuff. Are you, did you want to speak committed. about Regiments of Renown? Basically? Yeah. Ah, yes. So I just want to say thank you to all those people who yeah. gave their time and energy and life force and all the other good stuff for um for nothing. And just so that people who are list- doing the listening version of this, so um, so Barry, Alish, Dave, uh, Nathan, Rad. You miss yourself, um, Chris. You got to make a good no. call. And miss yourself, of Chris. Okay, and me. <laughs> um, Ole, Polly, Rad again. Um, Thomas, Peter, Chris, um, Martin, Jim, Ian, Paul, Matt, Michael, Matt, Chris, and Peter. Thank you all very much. It's a very thankless task, um, but thank you all for the time that you put in to everything. Yeah, and a special um, thanks to to Jim because uh, I know he's standing down and um, yeah, he, he's been he's been there since the beginning and he's put in uh, as much work and time and effort as anybody on the committee yeah. Yeah. easily. I think J- Jim wants to devote more of his time in the experimental form to sort of nurturing good ideas and getting somebody to bring them forwards, which I think is, is going to be really really useful because yeah. again, all these changes it's not just some. I mean that we like make up uh, we do we do play test things and try things out which is exactly where the experimental forum um should help so if you're watching this hopefully barry can you put a link to the experimental forum in the when you put this up on youtube mm-hmm, the show in, notes, in, yeah, the yeah. so the people can find it if they want to um but oh, if, otherwise if you're just searching on it if you google warmaster revolution experimental forum it should come up one thing i would say about the experimental forum is like we have a lot of members on there but not that much activity so people need to get involved don't be afraid to post shit up please yep 
and get um, involved. Especially, don't be afraid to post good stuff up as well. So that'd be good. <laughs> yes, there's, there's a lot of people there, whatever, wherever the word is, like voyeuring, but we need to kind of have more discussion if possible. Yeah, definitely. And be collaborative. Please don't try and shoot people down, even though I'm guilty of that probably as much as anybody. But, um, but yeah, so I just wanted to, because I know everybody else at the moment has, nobody apart from Jim has not recommitted to next year. So I just wanted to make sure we said thank you to Jim publicly because, um, yeah, he's been there since the beginning. Yeah, thanks very much, Jeff. Definitely. Yeah, Jim, thank you, as always. Um, voice of reason and many. Many's a heated discussion. <laughs> okay, doke. So now, well, one of the things that did come out of the experimental forum you mentioned a moment ago, the regiments of renown. So this is these are optional rules. Um, i.e., you, your opponent must allow you to use them. Um, whether we see them in the tournaments or not, again, I think that's TO's discretion at the moment. But again, have a look in the army books about book at that. They're right, it's right at the back, basically a way of adding in one unit of something that you're not normally allowed to have in your army. Um the Polish guys who've written this in particular, Peter, it's been a big, big work for them. Um, what they've done very nicely is kept it, done it in a way that it does, it's not going to unbalance any armies. So you can't, for example, add regiments of renowned cannons into your wood elf army. Um, that's definitely not permitted. Um, so what you get, it's it's they've thought it through very nicely to make sure that you don't unbalance um a list or give give a list, give an army something that it definitely shouldn't have allowed access to. So do check that out. And if you have multiple armies, you may want to switch the odd thing and just a little bit of nice fun and variation yeah, for yeah. whatever you're uh, doing. And it's not a core rule, so I mean, take it, leave it, use it, don't use it. These, this is this is the good thing about when you have an active community. People bring stuff to the table. You want to eat at the table, eat at the table. I mean, it's, it's, we've used it in the past, I think, in in tournaments. I think Jim had a tournament and Janice that you were allowed regiments of renown. I'm sure we did. Yeah, mm -hmm. we so we saw it a bit at the um, LTT last year because Paul and I did. But I mean, the, the bottom line, actually, with all these experimental things today, we've talked through the sort of approved things, which is basically the nice, tight tournament set of rules, the things that you would do for casual pickup play, where you know that you're going to play your opponent with something balanced. There's absolutely nothing to stop anybody who's listening to whatever they like as house rules, play whatever you like, try it out, whatever you like. If you find something that actually sounds good, put it on the experimental form and let all the rest of us have the benefit of your nice idea and who knows some of the stuff that you've played um this year or next year may turn up as an approved change um yeah. in the future yeah don't whatever you do don't rely on facebook to be the place you post stuff that then people can see in the future because it's yeah it's it's, it's it's beyond impossible to yeah. find things on facebook that's why we have that's why it's a forum because it's these discussions go on over months and months um so yeah facebook is not very good for finding things later yeah, yeah, and it filters what you see as well. You, unless you tell it to show all replies, it just just selected random replies, it seems. I don't even know how it filters the replies. So get, if you want to do anything for the game, you like the game, you want to get involved in the game, get on the experimental forum, get discussing things. For sure, bring your new army, because that's what everybody wants to do, make a new army list. Make make your army list. Maybe maybe use harpies instead of pterodons occasionally. Just, so we don't see pterodons in every list, but um, but keep talking about the game, and then the game will improve. And next year we'll have more source materials to draw on. More, yeah. more. The more people are talking about it, the more ideas there are, the better the game will be. Exactly. The more and the more chance of an original idea that solves a problem really elegantly. Yeah, like I'll be honest with the Nippon thing. I, my my first reaction because I'm I'm a very small C conservative. I definitely don't vote vote conservative, but from a perspective of the game, I'm like not quite zealot but um the, the source material is precious to me I, I think there's a lot of a lot more thought and effort went into the game than sometimes given credit for with the revisionists who want it all fucking keyworded and mm -hmm. <laughs> boiled down to the soup that is modern wargaming it's a bit different to that but um i forgot what i was even what i'm saying now the dementia's setting in nippon Oh, Nippon. Yes. Yeah. So I was, I was reticent to embrace the the fact that they get a little special plus one command, but maybe those plus one break, but maybe that is part of what the future will look like. Maybe that's the first stage in what will be the evolution of the game. Who yeah. knows? Yeah. Who and knows? The, the, possibly the solving of the command 10. Yeah, um, maybe, maybe. Come back in a year's knows. time and we'll, we'll, we'll know Ooh. the difference. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Okay. And we'll obviously do this again in a year's time, hopefully, if we're all still here. Yeah. Fighting the good fight. Mm -hmm.
Yes, definitely. Okay. So thank you for reminding me when my when my dementia kicks in. I, I laugh about dementia. Hopefully it's not a real thing, but I, don't, I think you're the last to know, aren't you? You've got it. So normally, <laughs> normally yes, yes. Normally, so maybe maybe I, the I think we're, we're all it. somewhere along that track. I think. <laughs> You shouldn't joke about it but uh anyway thank you very much for all your time and effort and thanks for coming on today chris pleasure yep. thank, thank you very much. much chris for your time thank you yep. see thank you all you later paul. thank coming on again paul i will buy you a light for christmas <laughs> thank you <laughs> so we can see your face yeah. oh, it's, uh, oh we stopped oh nope, not stopped not stopped right so uh well, that's it right goodbye <laughs> do you want me to end this now or do you want to, you're gonna cut, cut it at that point aren't you? So. That was War Must Podcast, episode 180 with Paul and Chris and family. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.